everything you need to know to visit Phoenix in Arizona. All right, let's go. The first thing to know is just a little bit of background information about Phoenix. It is the capital of the US state of Arizona. 1.6 million people call this city home, making it the sixth largest city in the United States of America. 4 million people live in the metropolitan area. Phoenix is probably best known for its warm weather, sunny warm weather in fact, because 85% of all of the daytime hours in Phoenix are sunny, making it the sunniest big city in the United States. Now, Phoenix has more than just sun. There's a lot of great natural beauty here, mountains, hiking trail, cactuses, sorry, cacti, that's the plural of cactus. And now whether you are here to experience the heat, the sun, the desert, hang out by your hotel swimming pool, there's a lot to see in Phoenix. So pack your bags, definitely pack your sunscreen, and let me tell you how to get yourself oriented to this city. So that brings us right on to number two, getting oriented. And one of the great parts about getting oriented to Phoenix is it's really easy to navigate because the entire city is laid out on a grid system. It's divided into four quadrants, northeast, northwest, southeast, and southwest. The city center is at the intersection of Central Avenue and Washington Street, and street numbers increase as you move further away from this point. Now, right at that center spot is downtown Arizona, home to three out of five of the tallest skyscrapers in Arizona. It's a pretty good downtown with lots of pretty tall buildings, lots of great food to eat down here, and it's also home to Chase Field. So if you're looking to pick up a baseball game, this is where you're gonna find Arizona's Major League Baseball team. In addition to city streets, Phoenix has a lot of very well-developed modern highways. There are two major interstates. Interstate 10 is the major east-west highway that runs through the city, although it does take a sharp turn to the south right around Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport. Interstate 17 is the primary north to south interstate. It'll take you up to Flagstaff in the north. By the way, pro tip in the US, if you see a freeway that has an even number like 10, it always runs east to west. And if you see one with an odd number, 17, it always runs north to south. Now, just to the northeast of Phoenix is the city of Scottsdale. And actually, that's where I'm filming this portion of this video right now. Scottsdale is home to many of the region's high-end resorts. It's also home to a really neat old town that we're gonna explore a little bit later. South of Scottsdale is the city of Tempe, home to Arizona State University. And if you're here to see an NFL football game, you'll find State Farm Stadium, home to the Arizona Cardinals in the city of Glendale, just to the east. The third thing to know is about getting into Phoenix. And if you're flying into Phoenix, there are two major airports. The first is Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport. This is the big airport in Phoenix. It has been named one of the best airports in the United States year over year, I think because the sunny weather leads to a lot of on-time flights. It's located three miles from downtown, so really convenient if you're going to downtown Phoenix. Southwest Airlines and American Airlines are the major carriers that serve this airport. Now, the best way to get into the city from Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport is to take the light rail. Uh, you can take it in for $2 a ride into downtown Phoenix or Tempe or Mesa. A taxi will cost you about 20 bucks. The second airport is Phoenix Mesa Airport. This one is the discount or budget carrier airport. You'll find flights on Allegiant and Spirit, WestJet, and a surprise number of flights from Canada go into Mesa Airport as well. It's definitely not as conveniently located. It is 20 miles southeast of downtown in the city of Mesa. If you're looking to take the train to Phoenix, no luck. Amtrak does not run to Phoenix. And if you're driving from Las Vegas, it's about five hours. And if you're coming from points west like Los Angeles or San Diego, it's about five and a half hours from those two cities. The fourth thing to know is about getting around Phoenix. And really the best way to get around Phoenix is to drive. And so if you didn't drive your car into Phoenix, then you'll probably be renting a car from the airport. At Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport, there's a ton of rental cars that operate there. They operate out of the new consolidated rental car facility. How new is it? Well, new-ish, but the way you get there, you take the air train to get there from the airport. No need to get on a shuttle bus, you get on this train. It's about a 10 minute haul out from the airport to get to it, but you'll find tons of rental cars available there. One point though, the surcharges, the fees to rent your car at the airport, they're really quite high. So if you're looking to save a little money, then take an Uber or taxi out to a rental car facility in town and rent it from there. It's not gonna be as convenient, but it will save you about 30% on the price of your rentals because that's how much of a surcharge that rental car facility 
Now, due to the oppressive heat in Phoenix in the summer, you won't find that many people walking too far distances in the summer. You'll find a few neighborhoods that people walk in, one notably being uh, Old Town Scottsdale right here. They've even got some nice covered roofs to keep you out of the sun. So what to do if you don't walk and you need to take public transit? There's the light rail I mentioned that'll take you from Mesa Tempe to the airport to downtown and a few points north or you can take Uber and Lyft. Rideshare is plentiful here in Phoenix. There is a bus system, but it's not gonna be that useful to you as a tourist. Now, one part of this grid system that is really important to pay attention to, particularly when you're using your GPS, is the quadrant that the street is in. So all of the streets here have a north, south, east, or west in front of them on the major streets, and so you need to put that in there. And some of them can actually have both. So the address of the rental car facility at Sky Harbor Airport is 1805 East Sky Harbor Circle South. Yeah, that's right. East and South. So make sure you get those correct. Otherwise, you'll be going to a completely different spot. Oh, there's also this area called Central Phoenix, which if you thought Central Phoenix was downtown, you would be wrong. It's actually the neighborhoods north of downtown along Central Avenue. The fifth thing to know is about food, and Phoenix has a lot of really great food in a lot of different cuisines, but Phoenix is most well known for its Southwestern cuisine, being here in the Southwest. What is Southwestern cuisine? It's a mix of Spanish, Mexican, and Native American influences. So think like chorizo quesadillas, tacos that are made with Indian flatbread, and empanadas that have a little bit of Mexican twist to them. Definitely check out some of the Southwestern restaurants while you're in Phoenix. For the best barbecue in Phoenix, head over to Rudy's Country Store. They've got a few locations and actually they're a chain, but don't let that stop you from eating here. This is legit Texas style barbecue that they serve by weight by the pound. Lots of different meats. My favorite is the beef brisket moist. What's that mean? It's the fatty part of the brisket and it actually costs more to get that because it's really juicy, delicious, and tender. They're cooking up the barbecue all day. Do be prepared for a wait when you come here because it can get quite busy for the sides. I really enjoy the baked beans and the creamed corn and legit it doesn't come to you on a plate it comes to you in like a soda basket that then you get some butcher paper to put it down on your table to eat and definitely make sure you get the original Rudy sauce or if you can't handle spicy then the sissy sauce is for you the next thing to know is about shopping what should you buy while you're here in Phoenix particularly in souvenirs Native American art in Arizona home to the Navajo home to the Hopi people plus many more tribes, but you will find a lot of great Native American art. Pick up some buffalo leather attire, buffalo leather shoes, buffalo leather jackets is a thriving art form out here. If you're looking for some candy to bring back, bring back some cactus candy. Originally developed in the 80s here, it is actually candy made from the juice of the prickly pear. You'll find it in most of the convenience stores in the region. And if you're looking for some high-end shopping, check out Scottsdale Fashion Square for a whole bunch of luxury brands all under one nicely air-conditioned roof. And you know, people often say malls are dying within the US, but it looks like this one's doing quite well and they're in process of doing a pretty significant remodel. And if you're looking for things to eat, they've got a pretty big food court here down in the center of the mall and a lot of restaurants on the outside too. Oh, and if you're looking for something to do after all the souvenir shops and shopping malls close, you'll find a decent amount of nightlife tucked away in Old Town Scottsdale, too. The seventh thing to know is about when to go and the weather. And Phoenix, in addition to being really sunny, it's really hot. It is actually the hottest big city in the U.S., having the record for the average high temperature in the summer between May and September. Daytime highs are almost always above 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and the record here is 122 degrees Fahrenheit, really hot. And then in the summer, it doesn't even really cool off at night. The nighttime lows in the summer are often above 80 degrees Fahrenheit, just because everything gets so hot and the heat gets trapped in the concrete and the road, and it just keeps it hot all day. Now the winters are pretty mild. In the winter, like in January, the daytime highs can often be 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Though at night, it can get pretty chilly, and you will definitely want to bring some jackets for the nighttime if you're here in the winter. Actually, the nighttime lows sometimes can get below freezing 
in Phoenix. Yes, it's true. Now, the good news is that even though it does get cold in the winter, you don't have to worry about rain. There is less than an inch of rain in any given month here in Phoenix. So with all that in mind, when should you visit Phoenix? Well, if you are looking for the best weather, arguably most people visit Phoenix during the winter time in Phoenix because it's the winter time in Canada or it's the winter time in New York on the east coast of the US. And so that's when you're gonna find the hotel prices are the most expensive and that's when it's the busiest. If you want the best deals on hotels, then come in the summer because many of the big resorts uh, actually offer like $100 a night specials because it's just so hot and you won't even wanna leave your hotel room or the hotel swimming pool. Actually, it's so hot. The W Hotel here in Phoenix has a cooled pool. That's right, it gets so hot that they actually need to cool the swimming pool water down. Next up, you should know about where to stay. And Phoenix has a lot of hotels for every budget, price, and taste. If you're looking for the highest end hotels, the big resorts that Phoenix is famous for, that you're gonna lounge by the pool, maybe go to the golf course, you're gonna find those in Paradise Valley and in North Scottsdale. The JW Marriott Desert Ridge is a great example of one of these big luxury resorts. You're gonna pay out of the nose to stay at these in the high season, which is, you know, January, February, March, when it's cool and not oppressively hot. Think upwards of $600 a night to stay in some of these fancy hotels. If you want a little cheaper, you can consider staying around the airport. You can, around Phoenix at Sky Harbor Airport. You can consider staying in Tempe around Arizona State University. But my favorite place to stay is right around Old Town Scottsdale. The hotels here are a little bit cheaper. They're still nice hotels and resorts, but they're not gonna be exorbitantly expensive. And because they're uh, in Old Town Scottsdale, you can walk from a lot of them, like this Marriott, to the Old Town right over there. And with cool views of the mountains here in the city. And the ninth thing to know is about some of the best day trips out of Phoenix. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering where I'm standing right now with this neat Instagrammable object in the back, this is in Scottsdale in the Civic Center. That's where you can find this piece of love art. But oh, see girl, my wife's favorite day trip out of Phoenix is to Sedona. Sedona is just 120 miles to the north along that Interstate 17 that I talked to you about earlier. Sedona is famous for its red rocks, hiking, natural beauty, also a hub for rejuvenation. There's a ton of spas and wellness centers and over a hundred art galleries in Sedona. Now, just a little bit to the north of Sedona is the town of Flagstaff. Flagstaff is actually in a forest. And so if you're in Phoenix in the summer and you're trying to get out of the heat, head up to Flagstaff. The temperatures can often be 30 degrees Fahrenheit cooler in Flagstaff than they are in Phoenix. And you know what? If you're here in the winter, you'll actually find some ski and snowboard resorts up there in Flagstaff too. What about the Grand Canyon? It's too far. It's like four hours from Phoenix to get to the Grand Canyon. I mean, you could do it in a really aggressive day trip, but I'd really recommend if you are looking to do the Grand Canyon with a Phoenix trip to like come to Phoenix, spend a couple nights here, spend a night or two in Sedona, spend a night or two in Flagstaff, hit the Grand Canyon, and then maybe end up in Las Vegas at the end and then fly out of Vegas. Now, speaking of Vegas, if you're gonna be connecting Phoenix with Vegas or some of the other cities in the area like Los Angeles, then you might enjoy checking out my travel guides for those two cities here on the screen. You'll also find links in the description below. And as usual, I won't say goodbye because I'm gonna see you right over here.